Hey guys, welcome back to Electrical Car Repair Life. Thank you guys for watching and subscribing to the channel. Let me tell you a little bit about us. Every single car we get at the garage, we try to make at least two to 300 free repair videos. Why we do that? Simply because our mission in the shop is to save you guys as much money as we can. All we need in return, please subscribe to the channel, like the video. That way we can keep providing this free information to you. Now, if you guys need to buy new gears, parts, tools to fix your Hyundai Tucson, check out the link in the description of the video below and you can see where you can get all that for a really good price and quick shipping as well. So this is the engine right here that we'll be demonstrating on. This is a 2.4 GDI. It will be the same way being in the vehicle, but uh, we'll be making hundreds of videos that can potentially save you thousands of dollars and with the engine being out, we can clearly show you things, guys. So now number one okay let's explain something before you start you need to disconnect the car battery why because you will be removing the high pressure fuel pump fuel lines you will leak fuel and you can uh, catch yourself on fire by disconnecting the car battery you can reduce that risk it still exists but you can reduce it and on these modern cars it really matters which battery terminal you disconnect and reconnect first do it the wrong way guys and you can cause damage to the engine computer and the electrical system so we have a special video that explains uh, the proper way to disconnect the car battery and reconnect it i'll put the link in the description of the video below number two you have a fire extinguisher on the side uh, protective gloves high protection also what do you want to do guys okay make sure the engine is cold it's not hot because you will be spilling fuel and make sure that uh, you don't have an open uh, flame spark anything next to you no smoking now with that being said okay that's the valve cover right here in order to remove it now okay uh, what do we need to do? We need to come here on the back side. Okay, that's the exhaust VVT solenoid. We need to disconnect it here. We need to go ahead and disconnect the wires for that. And you can even reach through the holes here and squeeze them if, you, uh, if you're afraid that you can break them. Now, right here, those things, okay, those gray things for the, inject, uh, for the ignition coils, they need to, okay, come out. That's the safety locks. Once they come out, you press down okay and you pull them out if it's stuck what you can do push in then press down and then disconnect it perfect now right here we need to disconnect the high uh, and the volume for the high pressure fuel pump volume sensor so we'll go ahead and disconnect that one and disconnect it right here over there guys okay let me show you now okay right here we'll have two bolts that we'll need to remove we need to remove ignition coils as well so we can flip the wiring harness to the side so let's go ahead do that now okay perfect now we have some there perfect ignition coils came out now right here you have the intake hose we have it removed but you will be able to either disconnect it from the intake hose or from right here it's up to you next we'll disconnect the fuel line before we continue here you have the low pressure fuel line if you don't know how to disconnect it we have a special video on our channel how to disconnect fuel line on a Hyundai on our main youtube channel how to repair guys then uh, you will be uh, probably leaking fuel, but carefully disconnect. Okay, that line as well. Okay, that's a high pressure fuel line. Perfect. Now, that line practically okay can come out like that. Now, let's see what else we have here. Okay, PCV hose. Let's go ahead and remove that PCV hose. Okay, to be out of the way, not to forget it two bolts for the high pressure fuel pump just remove a little bit one then the other one not one all its own because it's spring loaded pump and depending on where it stopped on the camshaft you can have quite a bit of tension also guys that will be the time to inspect your tappet okay because that one okay if it fails it can destroy your engine okay and you don't want that to happen okay we'll have a link in the description of the video below where you can uh, buy a replacement one from so our pump practically stopped at a point where it didn't have too too much pressure now right here we need to start removing all the bolts for the valve cover so starting from the back there you 
you can see where all the bolts are. Okay, they will come out guys, okay, be prepared, they will come out. Now, in the middle we have four more, five more. One, two, three, four, because this one we got this. Two for the next fuel pump there, we need to remove those as well. Perfect, now you grab each one of the bolts, okay and we need to pull them out okay i dropped another one you have to be kind of like careful okay not to drop them perfect so we have a few more here okay great two more let's see i don't think we have more bolts now right here we have a okay that's a mount for a wire we need to just pull it to the side a little bit now that gasket may be stuck depending how bad your um, valve cover could be stuck depending on how bad the gasket is and you can see the valve cover came out just like that so now let me show you what we'll be doing here we're going to go ahead okay and uh, we will remove the serpentine belt that's the serpentine belt tensioner you go counterclockwise we remove the belt pull it out okay and now uh, that's where things get a little bit more uh, complicated now guys in order to remove the crankshaft pulley okay the engine will be turning okay clockwise and uh, counterclockwise so what you will need to do in that case okay there is a special tool that it can fix the crankshaft so it doesn't move okay and you will be able to remove that bolt and get it tight to the uh, required torque specs now uh, usually we found a way okay to remove it without using special tools but i will not recommend it uh, what we are going to do okay now we're going to remove the intake manifold we have it pre in here so we can guys okay uh show you where you can install that special tool there are two kind of tools one is on the engine starter one is on the uh, underneath the oil pan on the flywheel and if you install that tool it's going to set uh, the crankshaft and you need and you can remove it if you don't have that tool it's something i don't recommend we usually use okay that air compressor that we'll put the link in the description of the video below the air gun that's a high torque gun that compressor pumps all the way to 165 psi which is unbelievable for that little compressor and we just practically go ahead okay and pre-loosen it with that so we got our pre-loosen already but uh, stay with us until the end and we're going to explain where actually guys okay where uh, you can install the special tool for the crankshaft now uh, that one our battery is shot on it we need to replace our battery on the on the little impact but we pretty loosen it with the big one and it's still holding a little bit so we'll go ahead and uh, change the battery and remove it but uh, this compressor and that impact usually they don't have problem removing the ball now installation is where you need to get it tight to certain torque specs and we'll put the uh, we'll have the video on the channel, but uh, now you don't want to guys Okay, you don't want actually to uh, Do that without a special tool because you will be kind of like guessing how tight it is Even though it's a kit pulley. That's a good design Okay It did get loose so now we can go ahead okay and pull the crankshaft pull it out of here you can see just like that if you want to see the video guys how to remove the intake manifold and uh, remove the engine starter uh, we have the video on the channel okay it uh, and it's actually uh, going to uh, teach you how to do that step by step so we removed the intake manifold engine starter has been removed okay so we can show you where you can install that special tool but practically you remove that's where your engine starter will be 
uh, you insert it right here with the bolts and it goes on the flywheel which is right here it goes in the teeth of the flywheel so that way you can securely okay remove the bolt so you get the idea guys so now for that oil pan you need to make sure that uh, the engine oil is drained completely you have no engine oil so the oil drain port is on the back side right there go ahead remove it and uh, collect the oil drain it now 12 millimeter socket guys and we need to start working here we need to remove okay these bolts for that bracket okay right there that we need to do and we need to remove the two bolts on the ac compressor on the bottom side okay those need to come out as well now that bracket will have one more bolt i think it has three bolts all together one is deep hidden okay right there you can see perfect just like that came out and one on the back side so four bolts or three three bolts three bolts i believe it was let me see no four there is one more uh, hidden behind the ac compressor okay so we need to go ahead okay make sure that you hold the bracket it's going to drop now why you need to remove that because without it you cannot remove the oil pan and here we have two huge bolts guys okay these two huge bolts that are with 12 point 12 millimeter socket and they actually hold the uh, crankcase the bottom part of the engine to the engine block and those are super long and they can be okay let us show you how long they are okay perfect. and those can be extremely tight so if you have hard time removing them you know why okay that's what they look like a 12 point socket now there is no gasket holding that oil pan the only thing holding it is uh, after you remove the bolts will be silicone gasket maker and we will explain which one to use that we recommend quite often here at the shop so we'll just go ahead and start removing each of the bolts now okay one by one we'll just go ahead and remove all the bolts with 10 millimeter socket now so that's what we're working on now and now we need to have more there perfect two three towards the back side and then we come around and we start removing all of those here then we have silicone on those bolts they may not come out as easy okay let me turn the line on so you can probably see better perfect now right there so if you see right here okay let's see if we have more bolts holding to make sure probably we have towards the back side one ours came loose because it, was, it had a leak okay and somebody didn't receive it correctly so we want to explain how to receive it okay the oil pan came out we still have a little bit of engine oil now we'll be rebuilding that engine and uh, it's not connecting rod from what we can see because of a bad connecting rod bearing and we'll have the videos about that as well now you need to clean the oil pan really good you need to get a scraper clean it really good if you bent it somewhere trying to pry it out uh, it's just a metal pen so you can uh, go ahead straighten it make it level and you need to clean it you do uh, use uh, alcohol rubbing alcohol to clean it clean the engine block where it's going to uh, be on and you need to put uh, a silicone gasket maker high temp this is a great great one i'll put the link in the description of the video below put it on the inner side of the boat and around the bolt go with silicone and uh, probably a bit uh, I would say probably about a three four millimeters go around and, and then you need to install the open and get it tight guys so you can see that's how you remove it practically so once we remove the oil pan okay right here uh, we remove the valve cover already oil pan has been removed you don't need to remove the intake manifold for the valve cover but 
uh, we made our videos guys how to do it and uh, if you're using the special tools for the crankshaft pulley you will need to remove the intake manifold if you want to see the video it's on our channel we pre loosen the three bolts actually for the uh, crank uh, for the water pump pulley here so we can go ahead remove those okay and it will come out simply just like that next we need to remove the tensioner pulley right here we should not uh, forget to do that first that bolt right here excuse me is uh, reverse threaded so in order to get it loose you go clockwise instead of counter -clock. okay the other way nope we need to use the because it got quite tight because every time you install the belt you actually get it tight okay it can lose so let's go ahead remove that one perfect now we need to remove that bolt here for the tensioner pulley because there is one hidden bolt and the timing cover is right there as well so let's do that now that's normal threaded bolt here only the pulley was reverse thread we need to remove that pulley here not to forget so let's do that perfect out now we need to remove the mount for the uh, that uh, bucket for the engine mount that supports the engine mount so uh, we're supposed to have 14 millimeter bolts but somebody just used different bolts here because they probably lost them one of them seems like okay well let's leave it on the thing and we can just pull it that way so we can remember where every bolt is perfect just like that that's the timing cover now stand to the end guys because if you do something wrong you can severely damage it right here we have two metal guides that you can pre soak with penetrating spray one here one there while you're working so it can start eating that rust because otherwise okay they'll be really stuck and you can have hard time removing the timing cover we're getting a 12 millimeter socket now and we start removing the bolt. All right. Perfect. Now, let's see. Let's see what else. Okay, we can do here. Ten millimeter holes. We need to remove all of this now. perfect now let's actually go ahead and see if it's going to come out you have silicone sealant that uh, that can uh, be stuck and these two metal guides don't pry too much if you do you can crack it if it doesn't go just go a little bit here here on every angle that way okay it can come loose because if you don't pre-treat those you don't solve them you'll be really hard uh, to pull that timing cover now that timing cover you will need to clean the silicone really good that old silicone needs to just come out clean it clean the engine block the cylinder head here uh, use rubbing alcohol to make sure that it's not greasy and later you'll need to use a, a high temp gasket maker which will put the link in the description of the video below and you will need to apply on the inner side of the bolts guys okay a thin bead uh, after that you use the same stuff for the oil pan as well so so next step guys what we're going to do okay we're going to actually bring all the pistons in the middle okay not to have one up one down because the one up if we remove the chain what can happen okay the the camshaft sometimes are spring loaded and we can uh, knock the valves a little bit and maybe uh, maybe bend them we don't want that to happen so we'll remove the spark plugs okay and uh, we'll verify okay that practically uh, all the pistons are in the middle <laughs> if you okay never do that but uh, it's possible just to remove sinner number three and four or one and two and verify that that way you will know okay uh, because three uh, usually pistons one and four are together and two and three but uh, what we'll do now okay uh, this one okay is right here 
So let's go ahead, okay, do that. And we'll need to remove uh, cylinder number three, okay, just uh, in case as well. So let's go ahead, see, you see the screwdriver is inside, go, okay, a little bit more, down, okay, like that. Okay, now let's uh, go ahead, okay, and uh, remove the other spark plugs as well. And we're going to verify that this one is not on top too. Okay, perfect. And let's do, okay, here now to see. So let's go clockwise a little bit. Okay. Okay, and I don't feel a piston, so it's right in the middle somewhere now. Perfect. I'm going to remove the screwdriver, not to damage something. Okay, and let us show you now. Okay, what do we need to do for the next step? We need to go ahead and remove the timing chain tensioner. Okay, right here. That will be the next thing to do with 10 millimeter socket. We are going to go ahead and remove the two bolts. Perfect one. Two. Came out. Now, let's go ahead. Remove the timing chain arm as well. You can see how that thing is spring loaded. It turned already. So, uh, in that case, you can get a 14 millimeter and Okay, I can get the slack out of it and we'll remove the timing chain tension around. Perfect, now we have the timing chain guide right here. Perfect, we'll go ahead and remove that one. It comes out. Now, uh, what else we need to do? You can practically go ahead, okay, if I uh, go ahead and get the slack out of this one here now, okay, we can probably take the chain from the bottom, okay, and remove that chain. Okay, great. Now, the main chain came out. Now, what about the oil pump, okay, and the balance shaft chain right here? We we'll recommend to replace that one as well, not just one of them, or uh, some people will just replace the tensioners and the tensioner arm and the guide and not the chain itself it's up to you but we will explain how to do it uh, and what we'll recommend to do so uh, next we need to go ahead and remove the oil pump assembly underneath uh, why because if you try to take that wheel off that's part of the balance shaft okay and everything will be off and you will have terrible vibrations that will practically take your engine apart later or it will be really really vibrating bad so uh, you will need to get big tools, okay, we pretty loosen our bolts already for the oil pump and the uh, balance shaft assembly, but usually those will be super tight. I think you have seven bolts if I remember correctly. One is out. You can see how long some of those are. Now we go to, okay, let's see right there now. Number two, perfect. Well, one minute, we need to wait. Okay, three, uh, we, I forgot. We need to first remove the tensioner, the arm and the guide. So we are all ready. So let's, uh, before we continue, let's go ahead. Okay, remove those so everything will be ready because the pump will just drop after that. So let's do those. No, 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 this one here first. So. No. Let's go ahead and install it. Okay. Tensioner first. Perfect. You always start with the tensioner first and then the other ones. This is not a hydraulic tensioner. This is just a spring loaded tensioner. That's a good thing. But the spring can get soft and what can happen? Okay, you may lose tension and develop a rattle. Okay, and that can result into even uh, the bounce shaft to jump, okay, and in that case it will be terrible or if the oil pump doesn't work, the engine will start for oil and practically it will destroy it. So I think we're on boat number four now, if I remember correctly. 
and uh, after that we continue there okay uh, let's see now we have two more that I can see five one more there number six and we have one left for the front okay right there you need to hold the pump it's heavy not to drop on it okay now you tilt the pump this way it has two metal guides and lift it up now go up and i'll pull the chain perfect and that's the other chain as well and we will okay have the video on the channel guys okay how to install them in case you need to timing marks and timing chain installation and they too so so at that point okay you need to verify actually that the pistons are still in the middle guys okay because uh, if we turn the valves like that okay and you have a piston up you'll bend the valve uh, number two why we removed all the timing chains because it's recommended every time you replace the camshaft gears to replace the timing chain kit as well guys since you're doing the job anyways and if you uh, have let's say uh, let's say you put a new camshaft gear only one even though it's recommended to replace two of them at the same time but you put one new one you have the stretch chain you have the stretched uh, gears what will happen guys okay you will actually okay uh, uh, fail the other one pretty uh, pretty quickly as well too so uh, now let's go ahead okay and see if we can take it loose okay one second okay let's try now you see where we have a place where we can hold the camshaft okay right here with a wrench you hold it with that wrench and then you take the bolt loose now if you want to see the torque specs we we'll have the video on the channel and you can see how to do that so we're going to go ahead remove that one you grab it it goes only one certain way okay because you can see there is a okay a place where it uh, goes to so now i need to spread that wrench it's recommended to use a good wrench not adjustable ones because they don't hold so good okay let's go ahead and remove the second one now okay perfect and now at that point we can go ahead and remove that camshaft gear okay as well so you can see it's coming out now perfect that's it guys that's how you remove the camshaft gears okay uh, if you need to on a hand and two zone hopefully the video will be helpful to any of you trying to figure this thing out if you have any questions let us know uh, thank you for watching and see you guys next time